Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome aboard the HMS Unprecedented. Uh, it is a delight to welcome you to our Virgin Voyage. Uh, I am your captain, Ben Vanderveld, uh, and you are now watching the world's first virtual fantasy variety galleon. Uh, we have all sorts for you this evening to entertain you. But before we get on uh, with uh, the, the, the tasting menu of uh, delights this evening, make yourselves known. Good evening, Gareth. Nice to see you here. Um, currently, we're in dock. Uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, our our journey is going to be. Uh, I, I imagine probably just a, just a quick little circular around the British Isles. Um, you know, we might nip over to Iceland, sailor, we'll all see. Uh, ahoy, Swanee, ahoy, Darsh, uh, ahoy, John, nice to see you. Um, hello, Mark and Julia, delightful to see you all. Uh, my questions for those of you watching, uh, where, where are you currently watching? And uh, what is your grog of choice uh, this evening? Um, I can't tell you how excited I am uh, for this. I'm, I'm gonna get uh, like, oh, oh, hello, Celia. Immediately, we've got uh, the old enemy of the sea of the British, uh, a French lady here. Good evening, Andy, as well. Nice to see you. I mean, you've said, you and Dan have said, aye, aye, Captain. I've dressed very much as a lighthouse man, but I'll, I'll accept that. Um, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my, um, uh, my caveats in earlier. I don't know if any of you saw uh, on the internet uh, that we on on our social media posts, but I've been very excited, uh, getting ready for today. And about an hour ago, Richard Branson released his flying monkeys out into the world, and all of Virgin Media in the country has crashed down until we give him the bailout that he so dabble, badly wants. Um, so uh, if this starts to go a little bit. Uh, Oh, green about the gills, then don't blame me. Blame a man who currently owns several islands, like an actual Bond villain. Good evening, Ilmari. Glad that for our maiden voyage, we've got our very own Viking warrior here. Um, uh, so who've we got on? Swannies and Stockwell, or St. Ockwell, or with the lovely Merlot. Uh, oh, John, John Dinkley's on the salted caramel green tea. Uh, that sounds like uh, an affront to everything the 19th century Chinese empire stands for. Um, right, listen, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back in contact with you guys later on, but I've got to tell you what we've got coming up tonight. What do we have? We have sea shanties. We have tales of villainy on the high sea. We've got ghost stories, murder ballads, monsters, and even the shipping forecast. So it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce you to the crew of this maiden voyage. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, say hello to Becky Owen. Hello, Becky. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Becky, where are you coming to us from? <laughs> we're coming to you from Whitley Bay. So we're right next to the sea. The sea's two doors that way. And I ah. put this, plugged this little fella out of there this morning, especially for you, Ben. Uh, smashing straight out of the jaws of an orca whale. Yes, it was gonna. It was a goner, and I heroically mm. saved its life. Oh, that's beautiful! Excellent piece of conservation. Let's say hello yes. to our next crew member. Uh, good evening, Paul. Hello. Hello. How are you uh, doing? Yes, May. Uh, great. A delight to see you. I, I saw you but two nights ago when you handed me and several of our close friends and partners our asses at a board game. Um, uh, and yeah. you, yes, and you come to us from Muswell Hill. Yeah, North London, landlocked, but you know, with a <laughs> with a sailor's heart in a jar. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, I think that that theme is going to be continuing in just a moment. Let's welcome aboard our fourth crew member. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are we? <laughs> it's good to see you all here. Yeah? It's it's, it's a delightful to nice see stuff. you too, uh, Dad. Dad? I mean, yes. come along. I mean, that, that is true. <laughs> But do we have to use the two <laughs> words, really? You know, I, I, okay. I'm not just defined by being a dad. I'm also <laughs> an immortal wizard. You know, you I, can be also I, I have many hats. <laughs> and you've picked the most apt one this evening. Uh, I, ladies I really and gentlemen, have. let me comment. Say, say hello to the story beast this evening. Where do you come uh, to us from this evening? I am floating on a little narrow boat full of books and flammable materials and gin on, which is a flammable <laughs> material, on the River Wandle. <laughs> on the on, on which river? The River Wandle, the hardest working river in Britain in the 19th century. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been having some time off. It's retired as a river's go at the moment. <laughs> That's where I am. Where's, where does the river Ron Wandle flow to and from? Well, it flows uh, from it flows from under scenic Croydon, uh, and <laughs> it goes all the way down. And I've walked this; it's a great walk. Uh, I've and it it walks goes all the way down to Wandsworth, the, which oh. is where the wand, it's the place the Wandle comes out. It's the the Worth, you know, one of those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, the, the, <laughs> hair, hair, gin. Hair, hair and gin, hair and rum. Mm -hmm. it's, and what, what, what I like is that Paul in particular is basically uh, balancing out our hair uh, <laughs> chakras this evening. That seems only fair. There can only be, you know, so much hair in the world. Uh, yeah, there can only be so much hair on this ship unless it's used as ballast. Yeah, quite um, so. Cool. We're making up for it. <laughs> we will find out more about the Wanda later, but it's time to meet uh, the fifth member of our crew. Uh, he is uh, the weatherman for this evening. Everyone say hello to Alexis Dubas. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. I, I like that you've come dressed sort of as an octopus smoking a pipe this evening. We'll go with that. Yes, we will. Uh, where uh, are you to be found this evening, shipmate? Uh, I am a har. I'm in Bermondsey, which is um, kind of landlocked, but, but has sea in it. So that's something, isn't it? Berman do. Sea on sea. Berman sea on sea on land on sea. Excellent. Let's get the final member of our crew on board and we'll have a, a quick little chat before we begin this evening's festivities. Uh, everyone say hello to Athena Kublainu. Hello, Athena. Hey, ahoy hoy. That's what they say on boats. Yeah. It is what they say. Ahoy yeah. hoy. It, fe it feels like that's only what posh people say on boats. But, uh, I'm posh. I'm you're posh. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. I made I'm an immediate... <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that's what we say. We've got the water. Yeah, we do. Um, and where, whereabouts do you come to us from, Athena? From Enfield, and we have two canals, so I know what I'm talking about. Right? Oh, oh, sweet. Yeah, Which canals? Just the, the, you know, just two of them. Canal, <laughs> one. <laughs> canal one and Canal two. I don't know what they're called. Do they have names? Oh. Oh, it's smashing. They've, they've, they've been named as if they're taking place in a PlayStation game. I, I love they it. I call them canals. Yeah, I, um, uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but Celia has already asked in, in a beautifully lyrical way, does the mustachioed one have severed ears around his neck? <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul does. Uh, let's just uh, quickly zoom in on Paul's eyebrows. Is it Paul, give, give us a bit of those eyebrows again. Yes, yes, he does. There'll be more news on that later on. Um, uh, but I'm going to ask one of guys, ask you guys a good question, then we'll crack on uh, with the show. Um, uh, first of all, we've seen what most of your grogs of choice are this evening. Obviously, you've all come aboard from your various ships and canal boats. So um, what flag were you all flying as you came aboard this boat? Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Beast, what, what flag have you been flying on the uh, seven I seas? I am flying the the flag of Jersey. Uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm I'm very international, to be honest. Uh, you know, I've ended up coming over, which is basically like a George Cross, but not a racist one, and <laughs> or racist in a different way. And then it's got a little, um, it's got the three leopards, well, the two leopards of Normandy and the one leopard of Anjou on it. Oh. Or three lions, as the English would have it. <laughs> I um uh, I mean less racist than St George sort of feels like a Jersey motto. I mean yeah it's it's definitely it's definitely a boast which we cannot live up to but you know <laughs> but I moved away I moved away. Yeah. That reminds me of my favourite flag-based heckle ever. I think it's Bill Bailey said that years ago, uh, when he was an open spot, uh, he was heckled by a man with a prosthetic leg who took his prosthetic leg off, placed it on top of his head and shouted out at him, I'm the Isle of Man, which That's is good. pretty impossible to come back from. That's true. Um, Becky, are you flying the flag of Whitley Bay or do you have a different flag aboard your vessel? Uh, well, I'm quite... I think I'm a bit of a cultural hybrid because I was born in Wales, brought up in Yorkshire, moved to Newcastle. I'm all out of the shop, 
but I do have a real kind of strong connection still to Wales. I think I'm, I like that it gives me permission to be as much of a pretentious wanker as I want when I'm in England. <laughs> I can talk about, you know, the mythology and I can say swear words that sound really sexy and, you know, so I've, I've kind of cherry picked the Welshness back. And so I think I'd fly the Welsh flag, but because of this whole thing that's going on, you know, with the Rona, um, and because all the animals are coming out and like bisons are being born that have never been born in, in the wild, you know, what's also happened is that dragons have reappeared. So I've actually got a, dra a real dragon that is the flag bearer on my ship, um, which is which is integrated into my flag, who I can also call because we've become quite close. I've been in lockdown for 50 days, so it's a long time to, to get to know each other. Um, I've got, I have a number of questions. Um, sure, fire away. First of all, I love the fact that between you and the story beast, we've already turned this into a Poundland Noah's Ark. <laughs> There's a lot of heraldry going on today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very, there's always a sharp edges, always a sharp edges heraldry. But also loads yeah, well, of people are playing Dungeons and Dragons online at the moment, aren't they? So yeah. I, I think there's a conscious collective will for the dragons to return. I think humans are asking mm. for it in a collective way, and I just think it's going to happen. Uh, well, I mean, I think we found out what the finale of this show is going to be. Uh, one more question before we ask someone else about their flag. Uh, thank you, Story Beast, for calling them down a la Vic Reeves and the dog from above. <laughs> um, as was foretold, yes. As was foretold by, by the shooting of the stars. In the, Mab in the Mabinogion, it was foretold. Yeah. Just between what King is... Arthur and Caridwen. Yeah. <laughs> You, uh, uh, Becky, you mentioned uh, Welsh swearing being lyrical. What's the best Welsh swear word? Oh, uh, it's it's racist against the English, so that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Go that on. makes it all right. We can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's tough, Bob, deep size, um, which oh. I didn't say very sexily, but I could if you wanted me to try. Tush, sure. Bob. Oh, I was doing it. Okay, hang on. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's, it's the delay. It's the delay. Tush Bob Deep Size. And it means our souls to all Englishmen. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm happy for that to be uh, written My down mother taught me it. She's a week. terrible woman. She's a terrible woman. She's a jingoistic <laughs> patriot. She's terrible. I love you, Mum. Oh. <laughs> terrible women in the heart and soul of this ship. Uh, talking <laughs> of terrible... Talking of terrible women, Athena, hello. What, uh, what, what flag are you flying this evening? Working class and terrible. You don't know anything about me, do you? Um, no. What's my, my flag? I come from a lot of places, as, as you would definitely know. I come from West Africa. I come from the Caribbean. I come from India. I come from North London. There's one thing that unites all those things, and that's the love of Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> We love a container, all right? We love a container. You know when you get like a five litre ice cream tub from Iceland? I've got tub, I've got tub from Yankee. Yankee! Yes, right? mate! And we, we store all sorts in them. Screws, black eyed peas, bread, whatever. So my flag is just one of those five litre containers. And, in, <laughs> containers. and it's very close. It's, my, it's part of my cultural identity. Uh, so please don't laugh. <laughs> it's my heritage um, and welcome aboard uh, my ship please and enjoy having to put your leftovers in that's what I want from, for all of you leftovers in containers <laughs> that's beautiful I think I think that we're going to use your Tupperware container as the lifeboat on the HMS Unprecedented <laughs> the, uh, the the SS Tupperware I think works nicely um, oh. Mr. Mc, Mr. McGarrity what flag are you flying? Oh, White Rose of Yorkshire move on <laughs> all right, fair play. <laughs> um, and last of all, before no, we no, go, actually, I look around. Oh. I just had a look around the room to see if there was anything flag-like within grabbing distance, so that I could use it as a prop. And uh, my house, because of the creature that lives in lockdown with me, has hundreds of these just available <laughs> all around. Yes, the house. yes. 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 The sweet yes. smell of a thick covered bib. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think this would strike fear into the hearts of anyone who's had a child, seeing that come across oh, the yeah. line. Yeah, that's more terrifying than the Jolly Roger. That really is. No one's going to board that boat. Right, um, a Jolly Roger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Alexis, what flag are you flying? Uh, tonight I'm going for the flag of Atlantis. 
<laughs> lovely place great holiday yeah it was yeah my uh, great great grandfather no grandmother uh was from there so um ah, right yeah. it's quite minimal it's just plain blue really minimalist flag i, 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 I admire the um the minimalism yeah that's great and, uh, and funnily enough uh, all swearing in atlantis is also racist against the english it's just it's a big it's a big yeah, they hate everyone at atlantis they um over dwellers they call them um, <laughs> Horrible, horrible people. The worst swear yeah. word um, I ever heard since you uh, since you asked was um, when I was out in uh, Cape Town and uh, someone told me, I can't remember what the uh, Afrikaans was, but it translated as, and uh, brace yourselves for this one because it is strong. Um, it's, uh, you were born from your mother's arsehole because her fanny was simply too busy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, I've, and I've put the word fanny in there uh, to make it slightly more passable. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you're welcome yes mate i'm glad that you have brought some salty sea chats to the hms unprecedented we, we may be at um, sea but there's still um uh, you know, di- 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 oh, yes and dignity yeah oh no i mean you say you want to maintain your dignity international waters so all bets are off okay the word um, was uh, uh cunt Excellent. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, we've got all sorts going on. But before we uh, leave the shallows and head out into the channel, uh, we need to know what the weather is like. And so uh, Alexis, she will be dressed, is going to commence the show, is going to begin our maiden voyage with the shippish forecast. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, both real and digital, for Mr. Alexis Duva. Now the shipping forecast poem issued by the Poet Office. On behalf of the Maritime and Post-Covid Agency at 2016 today, Monday, 27th of April. Viking, online, paper bought, fed easterly into printer, four or five sheets, spilled coffee, wet, poor. North at Sierra, South at Sierra, 40s, variable, everything going south, otherwise fair. Drinking four, five, six at times, later, head thundery. Cromarty, fourth of the night, northwesterly, then south, <clears throat> wet, strong, tasty. <laughs> Tyne, Tyne. Fucking northeasterly, like, merely fair. <laughs> I'll fuck it up here if you look at my board, like. Dogger, car park. Two, three, four, <laughs> occasionally five. Entering the south, north, east, and west. Windows, steamy. Seats, damp. <laughs> Fisher, German bite. Quotas veering southerly. Two world wars, one Brexit. <laughs> Cyclonic fuckaboutery, poor. Humber, Thames, Dover, White, Portland, Plymouth, Biscay, Trafalgar, Fitzroy, Seoul, Lundy, Fastnet, Irish Sea, Shannon, Rockall, Malin, Hebrides, Bailey, Fair Isle, Faroes, South East Iceland, all fine. <laughs> Joke, in danger of being laboured, risky, good, veering to moderate. Cumberbatch, everywhere, strong, <laughs> versatile, southerly, dry, good. Covid, Picking up speed, unprecedented. Performers becoming even more poor for a time. That was the shippish forecast. Ah, yeah. Beautiful stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's exactly what we're all about mm. here on the HMS Unprecedented. Um, uh, a, a couple of things before we head into uh, our second uh, act of the evening. Um, First of all, uh, a question uh, that uh, Celia has asked of uh, Becky is, what is the name of the dragon you are cohabiting with? Oh, that's such a good question. This is terrible, but I can't pronounce it because it's every time he says it, it breathes loads of fire everywhere. So um, I have to get out of the way really quickly. So I've not caught it yet. Um, it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit like dog shit, but it can't be dog shit because no one calls a dragon dog shit. No. Not at all. No one dare call a dragon dog shit. Um, it's similar um, to dog shit. 
<laughs> uh, and secondly, I would like to, uh, let, as, as Alexis uh, alluded to in his shipish forecast, um, oh boy, are us performers poor right now. Uh, so uh, we are basically <laughs> one of those sectors uh, who has had our entire living uh, explode. Um, <laughs> uh, the story beast there just embodying uh, an entire sector of performers there. Um, so if you've enjoyed uh, what you uh, have seen, please do donate to us. You can donate either via uh, coffee.com, which is, you know, buy coffee, three quid, or some grog, um, or you can donate to us via PayPal, whatever you prefer. But prefer. And if you just want to reward uh, the excellent Lexus, um, you can head there uh, and you can purchase, uh, I don't know, what can they purchase from your band camp? Uh, I, you can purchase all two of my albums. Um from there, there's uh, Cars and Girls, which is a 50 minute poem, if you're into that sort of thing. And um, uh, Alexis Dubas versus the world, which is lots of little short poems and really stupid jokes. Beautiful stuff. Um, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've had some poetry. Uh, I think it's time for some music uh, because, well, because that's the way it's scheduled. Um, <laughs> so it is time for the uh, uh, I am I am giddy on uh, both rum and technology working better than expected, my friends. Um, yes. It is time for our opening sea shanty from the wonderful Becky Owen, uh, and this is called "You Keep Flooding In." Is that right? It is, and it, um, it's a sea shanty, kind of, because I've written songs all my life, and they've they've been about the sea quite a lot. So. Mm -hmm. um, even though um, we've called it a sea shanty, I do feel like we've slightly shoehorned it into that genre. But I'm all right with that if you are. Um, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, Becky, from now great. until we're allowed back out of our houses, this entire operation is all about shoehorning things into a <laughs> yeah. construct that they don't necessarily belong in. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, that's very encouraging. Thank you. So, yeah, this yeah. is a song called You Keep Flooding In, and um, I wrote it a few years ago. Round of applause, everyone. Let me know how the sound is if I need to like turn the piano up or down or whatever. It sounds alright so far. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I remember when I thought this fear of you was a symptom of a sheltered flowering you. Now I know that this fear of you was a symptom of the way I feel about you. But I wasn't ready for that. You knew that I wasn't ready. And here we are again. You keep flooding in. You keep flooding in I know that there's a lot of things in you Quantum truth Tinder waiting dry I believe that every one of these things in you Will break through And ignite I will be ready for that You know I'll always be ready To be you again You keep flooding in Ah, you keep flooding in You keep flooding, you keep flooding in I can't not get to my love if I would be for the water of time runs between him and me and here I must stand with a tear in my all sighing and sobbing my true love to see This fear of you was a symptom of 
a sheltered flowering youth. Now I know that this fear of you was a symptom of the way I love you. Yeah! Becky Owen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Did you hear was... it all right? <laughs> it beautiful yeah. at my end. Okay. I kept getting really weird feedback. Um, so when I was doing the high notes, it kept coming back into, into my ears and it was like, whoa, man, I have not smoked yeah. enough for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting some, some lovely resonance wandering around my ears as well. That was beautiful. Uh, that was good. beautiful. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, if you enjoyed that as I imagine you did, uh, you can see uh, a link to Becky's uh, Bandcamp as well and her new album Chaotica, which is very much appropriately named. For and how weird is that? At. Look at the cover. Ah, Considering ah. we're on a boat, we're on a boat, man. Are you lying on the yeah. Atlantis flag for that shoot? Yes, yeah. I am, Alexis. <laughs> yes, I am. I knew it. Uh, it's a bigger um, shot of the Atlantis flag inside. Um, I'll get it for you to show you later. Um, just to let you know, Becky, amongst you, like that, our feed is currently full of applause for you, uh, particularly from uh, regular of the good ship, Hans Pader, who is one of oh. the uh, most august um, music journalists in Switzerland, uh, who Alexis has gigged for in Switzerland as well. Lovely man. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah, lovely man. First, Hello. First, first, First time I remember probably chatting and hanging out with Hans Peter. We had a sort of a lock in afterwards at the old Good Ship in Kilburn. And we were all sort of, me and the other comics were sharing stories of gigging with particularly famous comics. And I think Hans Peter just sort of like sat there quietly and eventually he turned around and went, So I was interviewing Paul McCartney one day. We were like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Um, do you want to know? Oh, here's here's a fun fact I learned about Paul McCartney last night. Um, so you know the Burlington Arcade in Piccadilly, like old posh Victorian arcade. Mm. Um, mm. So you are there. There are Beadles there who are like a, a a local police force of just that arcade. And one of the things that they have to enforce is that you're not allowed to whistle in that arcade. An old arcane law. Um, and one day a man was uh, wandering through Burlington Arcade whistling, and one of the Beadles rather. Uh, grumpily went, excuse me, sir, no, it's not allowed to happen there. And the guy turned round, and it was Paul McCartney. Uh, and the Beatle went, well, in your case, I'll make an exception, and is now written into the law of Burlington Arcade that you're not allowed to whistle in it unless you're Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> One rule for us. One rule for Paul McCartney. It's all it's the same way. Yeah. What was that? I said Beatle privileges are acceptable, man. Be Oh, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I've, I'm done with it. I'm yeah, well, sick of it. Is, yeah, as a musician, you must be sick of Beatle privilege. Well, he nicks all our PR, PRS. If you look into how the PRS is, is blooming well structured, it's the mm -hmm. people that are probably going to get the most. It's like Occam's Razor. That's how they do it. If, you, if you're the most famous musician on the planet, you're probably going to earn the most money, so we'll give you the most money. So Paul McCartney, just by default, gets all my bloody PRS for those songs I wrote about those dog food adverts in China. He's getting my money. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but a union meeting has broken out on the HMS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of him, sick of him. Uh, okay, well, what we've learned so far is... Uh, Please uh, boycott Paul McCartney. <laughs> um, uh, two things before we go uh, over to our, our next performer. Uh, just just a lovely little chat from da uh, my pal Dan Stanton and Celia out in Montpellier. Dan wrote, tell us out of bed, so easy on the cunt right now, please. And then he followed up by going, ah, can he go wild? Always go easy on the cunt, guys. Or Always go easy on the cunt. It's a um, rule. What well, is the cunt? Don't make me say it again. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, you can all you can all say it. You can all say it. Oh gosh, a mutiny's occurring. Um right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am I am gonna point uh out I'm oh I'm gonna say uh Cummings, thank you so far to everyone who's donated uh to us so far to keep the ship afloat and keep the performers afloat. Um Listen, I'm going to engage my chugging skills. For those who know me and those who don't, I used to be a charity fundraiser back in the day. Uh, I was a nice one. Tell them that, they'll go away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was a friendly one. I was a friendly one. Um, if you are able to uh, buy us a pint, 
uh, in uh, Mayfair, then that would be uh, extraordinarily welcome. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but five out of the six performers have very young children right now. And uh, Becky has a, uh, a mystical stone habit and a baby seal that she has to look after as well. Um, um, Dan has also said that the kid has gone back to bed, so feel free to open up the cunt again. I will. Donate her if you cunt. Um, <laughs> note, yeah. uh, it's time for our, our, our third act. Uh, and uh, what's that coming over the waves? I think it might be a monster. It might be a monster, ladies and gentlemen. So, pray silence, followed by an enormous round of applause for Athena Kublainu. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hang on a minute. Someone just said, hang on a minute. It's a monster, right? So I'm going to keep this as a pet. I want to talk to you about it. Oh, uh, bear, bear with us a second. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, in, the internet's gone very weird. Um, I. Yeah, I mean, I can. Uh, I just I, basically, basically, Athena, you just went. Uh, your voice went pixelated, essentially. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to blame this almost entirely on St Elmo's fire or on very angry mermaids uh, ruining our Wi-Fi connection. Um, oh, what a shame! Oh, what a shame! Um, uh, yeah, I. I think, I think, and I, it is, <laughs> yeah, Dan Sutton says, Richard Brands has been nicking our waves again. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, if, yeah, if we could all as one sort of shake our fists at Branson. One, two, three, Branson. Um, okay. Uh, uh, this, I mean, listen, this is, this is exactly what you would expect of what is essentially pirate radio uh, gone 21st century. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. John Henry very much looks like a pirate radio DJ. You've got me on the So we're coming out to you right now with some definitely illegal pop music. Oh God, the, the crimes you committed, we'll find out about in thirty yeah. years. <laughs> oh yeah, don't don't look up. Don't look up your favorite pirate DJ. Don't. Um, okay, I think what we're going to do is uh, we are going to move on uh, to uh, Becky. Are you happy to do another song? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Try and, like, eject Athena from uh, the boat and then see if I can drag her back on board again. So you're going to throw um, her a life ring. You're going to push her over the uh, like you know, the plank is there, and then you're going to chuck yeah. her a life ring. Yeah, Athena, are you all right with that, mate? I mean, it's essentially, I appreciate that's pretty much a very abusive behaviour on a boat. Just a bit um, dodgy. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. Uh, Just saying. Uh, no, I think that might be... be a good idea. That's that's probably the only thing we can do, really. But it's a shame not to have her. Oh, it's a real shame not to have her. Well, I've, I've, I have plans. So if you, okay. you, you do a yeah, little... Yeah, I'll crack on. <laughs> you, you, you crack on uh, with, with, a little, with a little song... Uh, yeah, I mean that's a, that's a very incriminating cough right now. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, like Athena has left the room without me doing it, so she actually jumped overboard um, rather than me fine. pushing her. Well, I think that's better that that way around. I'm more comfortable now. <laughs> cool. All right. I, I liked that your plank walking was uh, very much a, a consent issue. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Which, to be fair, pirates were terrible with. They um, were, and we're ch we're to ch as as new wave pirates. We're here to change all that shit, right? Right. If we're going to mutiny, we're going to do it kindly somehow. Um. Yeah, I agree. I mean, well, I think I was I was going to ask earlier on uh, for your um your contributions to the uh, the charter of the ship, and I feel sort of like a kind mutiny should be one of them. Yeah, that's that, um, that'd be great. Gents, do you have any other uh, uh, any other suggestions of what we should perhaps add to the charter of this ship? <coughs> I uh, I have one from an actual pirate code. If you're interested, oh yes, please. 
Uh, every man who shall become a cripple or lose a limb in the service shall have 800 pieces. Oh. How, much, oh. how, much, how much is that in today's money? Well, it's sort of a better approach to healthcare than most of America, so... <laughs> <laughs> the pirate welfare state i'm interested in that <laughs> <laughs> floating socialists <laughs> <laughs> they also they they also like gay pain. marriage as well oh sorry <laughs> no, <stand right. laughs> oh, no, oh, no they did it was uh pirates it's matalotage that's what it was called wasn't it matalotage mm -hmm. we should yeah. reinstill that name you know as you know as an option for everyone as well, well you know, Mat in if you don't want marriage you can have matalotage yeah, well, it's, well, it's instead of it's it's somewhere in between civil ma civil partnership and marriage, isn't it? Give more options. We need more options on this. I think that's the only fair way, personally. Yes. How how would you, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 our, our friend uh, Mink Et has passed on that in America you get eight hundred Reese's pieces, <laughs> which is <laughs> nice. Wow. I'd take that right now. Yeah, we mate, we all we all would, we all would. I mean this. <laughs> You can yeah, like well, we can wait till they go stale and use them as sandbags. Um, right. Um, uh, your net. We're gonna we're gonna crack on with uh, with Becky's song, which uh, it's it's called Blizzard. Is the next song right? It is called Blizzard, and it's another yeah. maritime song that I wrote a few years ago. It's not from the album that I've released because I'm playing that with a band, and the band aren't here, and we're all a bit sad about that. We're a bit glum. Oh. We all keep getting. We all keep like entering into like emo WhatsApp exchanges about how much we miss each other. That's my band. Oh, there's, there's hello, ten of us. hello, Becky's band. They called it. They called the refuges. The, the refugees. The refuge. the refuge. Yeah. So Becky Owen in the refuge, and there's, there's ten of us made the album. But um, I miss them. So I'm not. You know, when you miss summer, so you, you you kind of avoid it a bit. Is anyone else doing that? Um. So I'm. I'm. Yeah. I need to speak to my mother. I think that's what I'm projecting there. Anyway. So this yeah. is a song uh, called Blizzard. And oh, beautiful. And well, that seems appropriate for having lost Athena. Yeah. Yeah, maybe she's riding yeah. the wind. Let's imagine her riding the maybe wind she and then is. coming back round to us. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. I shall, I shall try and summon her. <laughs> <laughs> summon her from the seas. Beautiful stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Becky Owen and Blizzard. Thank you. Woo! I go walking by rivers at night, meandering home in the dark. You say don't take risks, existence is based on this. Leave with 10,000 stories to tell, meander on gnome in the dark. Only when you go that I know that you are made for me It's only when you show me you are lost that I will be Wheeling, wheeling, wheeling Love, it climbs to the top of a really tall thing And it walks in a blizzard without clothes and it laughs as it's falling off the really tall thing And it's bold as it shivers exposed Wheeling, wheeling, willing to drown Willing to drown Willing to drown top of a really tall thing and it walks in a blizzard without clothes and it laughs as it's falling off the really tall thing and it is bold as it shivers exposed Brr, wheeling, wheeling, willing to drown willing to drown
from your river I won't look its mirror in the eye I walk away from your river Until I'm willing, willing, willing. Oh, beautiful. Thanks, so guys. Good, mate. Thanks, oh. Oh, Thanks for listening. So you know, with that song, um, I had someone come up to me at a gig a couple of years ago, the Deer Shed Festival afterwards, and this guy said, my daughter loves you, and he, she re- we've got all your CDs, and we really love that song that you you you, you do. This is before I went on, by the way. And um, she said she, he said she knows it as the one with the willies in it. And I was like, sorry, what? And how old's your daughter? And he was like, she's nine years old, and she's heard the lyrics to Blizzard, and she thinks she's sing- singing about willies. Uh, and she's a big fan, and I'm like, I feel so conflicted. So then, when I got up onto the stage, I introduced the song, and there's that bit, Willy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so impossible not to sing the word Willy all the way through that song for that gig, and try not to look <laughs> this little girl in the eye as I sang it. Oh God, it makes me wonder what the blizzard's made of now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So that got ruined. And it turns out the guy that said it, this is a clanger, the guy that said it, I can't remember his name, but he's an actor. He's an, he's an English actor. And he was in, have you watched Apparitions with Martin Shaw? Yeah. Oh, so good. Well, the guy in the first episode that's on Amazon Prime, it's absolutely brilliant. It's like pre-conjuring horror, beautifully written, really diverse, um, quite really progressive, examines demonology in a really robust way. And um, <laughs> it's got uh, so, that guy is the first... So. You're already sold. That guy yeah. is the first victim of possession. That's not a spoiler. You know that within the first five minutes. And he's terrifying in it. And I was watching it the other night, and I was just having this flashback to him saying the word willies at me, as if I was Reagan from The Exorcist. <laughs> and it all came together in a very odd way. It's nice to see people. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you've, you've really nailed the uh, oversharing three too many rums vibe that I've been looking for. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'm shutting up now. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's beautiful. This this has got um, a sort of like the world's going to end, so secrets don't matter anymore. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's just around your house. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> it's no every single citizen of Whitley Bay has issued one to terrify the seagulls. <laughs> I call him I, Stephen Seagull. <laughs> I to be honest, Becky, I want you to come on every single future show and just sit in the corner and just, <laughs> just be there for the entire hour doing nothing. The only thing is, once you've worn it for even a second, your entire head smells of a condom. So that's what's happening. <laughs> Imagine sort of bringing someone back to your place for a one night stand again. Have you got protection? Well, I've got this. <laughs> this is this is less smelly. This one. This is a lot less smelly. <laughs> Can I just say that you have uh, set the bar for dress up on this <laughs> show <laughs> almost impossibly high? Have you uh, all doing <laughs> it for your prep time? I've not even looked at the yeah. piano today. I've just been <laughs> gathering. <laughs> <laughs> um I was I'll, I'll be honest, I was I was about to introduce Mr. Mr. McGarrity, but he's 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 decided to see you. <laughs> hey, yes. Come on. Hello, brother. <laughs> I mean, that is <laughs> that is a problematic piece of kit to bring on the 70s. Oh, that's proper. That's oh, a man wow. who likes jousting. Wowzers, that's cool. And, yeah. and, and unusual. Cool yeah. and unusual. Cool and unusual. That's the name of my favourite lawyers. No. <laughs> um, what did you say there, Paul? I said the problem is if you only stick it on for just a second, your head smells like a medieval condom. <laughs> <laughs> that is a problem, yeah. Yeah. I didn't have stuff. Really 
um, uh, before, I mean, a medieval condom feels like a perfect segue into the horrors that you're about to talk about. But before you do, uh, an enormous thank you uh, to Swanee, to Karen and Ilmari, to Rosanna and to Mark Stepton, uh, all of you for uh, donating to our wages. Uh, if you've enjoyed, frankly, the circus of horrors that you've just seen in the past three minutes is worth a donation alone. Um, so if you uh, <laughs> Yeah, these don't pay for themselves, you know, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but the seagull hat on the sunflower itself—they have a, re- a, a, a registered retailing price of what, like a hundred quid each, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you enjoyed what you've seen. If you want to buy us all a beer, uh, you'd be extraordinarily welcome. Uh, but now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is time for tales of villainy on the seven seas. So uh, once again, raise your glasses and your gra- grog and applaud. <laughs> to the cardinal points of the compass for Mr. Paul Duncan McGarrity. Hello. So I'm going to talk about villains and people asking, why do you know anything about villainy? Well, an easier way of answering that is uh, to ask the question, exactly how tall, white, male and British am I? Uh, And to answer that, I once left a mugging with the words, no, I do not (laughs) have So there, that pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about me. Um, And the British are, well, the word Englishman actually means, in many languages, uh, literally, sea bastard. uh, (laughs) We just just went around uh, uh, taking things, really. Um, So I'm going to talk a little bit about the villainy of the British. And and I think... um, you may notice that I have a moustache. Uh, uh, this has led to people asking me questions that I think were influenced by my look. Uh, one man cornered me and asked, uh, uh, why the British, hmm? why the British, hmm? why the British always the villains in movies? And I have the answer. And I think it's probably because of our entire history. LAUGHTER um, the British are, uh, I, I also uh, know that uh, uh, I, I am an archaeologist by trade, um, which of course uh, is a career entirely created by uh, a nation that wanted to explain away its kleptomania. <laughs> uh, uh, the thing that was, is... That was such a guilty little imperial laugh. Sorry, on you go. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The, the single laughs and uh, interjections make this really uh, reminiscent <laughs> of my early gigs. And, uh, yeah, there we go. No feedback. Keep, keep going. We believe in you. <laughs> yeah, you believe in me, but every now and again I get a laugh and then silence. It's terrifying. The British are actually, uh, the British have attacked. There are, there are just shy of 200 countries in the world, and the British have not attacked 27 of them. And of those countries, one of those is Vatican City. But you know, you know that there is a secret dark part of like a private members club somewhere in Chelsea where there's just an old general going, you should have let me try. What's the worst that he's going to do? Forgive us. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it fascinates me. I met a man who actually, um, he actually said uh, something that I thought was a really interesting thing. Um, he was on his high horse and he said, uh, uh, imagine, right, imagine apologising for the greatest empire the world has ever made. Imagine not apologising. Like, that is like a serial killer who, who goes out and, like, skins his victims and and makes a a skin suit out of them. Uh, And then when they're caught, uh, complains that nobody mentions the craft. It's horrifying. The the, the thing that fascinates me is the the, the posh uh, British accent is the sort of the thing that people have heard around the world, like that kind of RP, hello, we're here to take everything. This is the the, the (laughs) point. face and voice uh, that filled the British Museum. Uh, they, uh, they, the English, weirdly, this is this is quite interesting, um, the British, the posh British accent, when they do studies of uh, which accents, uh, you know, uh, I have 
what people would consider a very trustworthy accent, like a, a very friendly accent that's from Yorkshire. Um, but the RP British accent always comes back as the one that people trust most. Like the things that that accent has done and people are like, fine, that seems fine. And also fascinatingly, I wanted to know what the rest of the world thought about the British. So I asked people who, who were not brought up here, uh, what three words uh, would you use to describe a British person before you met them? It's fascinating uh, because after you collate all of them together, the one word that comes out is polite. The things that we did around the world and people remember that we said, please. <laughs> That, of course, is only if you take everyone in the world, right? You can keep your shit together when you go on holiday. It's your neighbours who know what you're truly like. So what I did is I threw out all of the countries in the world and left only the Irish and the French. And the word changes to cunts. Because <laughs> it's, you just can't keep our shit together. The RP, the posh English accent, is it's fascinating, that idea that it's, it's trusted. You know, to me, that's the voice that my ancestors would have heard saying, hello, would you mind awfully walking very slowly towards those machine guns? Thank you. But if anyone wants to know what the least trusted accent in the UK is, um, I'm sure you're all saying it now. Um, it's uh, Scouser. Well done for anyone who guessed that one. Uh, it, it is, and I think it would have absolutely changed the world if the dominant action of, uh, accent of our uh, upper classes hadn't been the ha but instead been, eh, all right, uh, we're here to uh, just have a look at Kenya. And everyone would be like, oh, no, hide Kenya. <laughs> ah, if you can just hear in the background the sound of seagulls, which is also my six-month-old child waking up in the middle of a set. Not something that normally happens when you do gigs. People have been saying things like working from home is, is tricky. I'm an archaeologist. Do you know how hard working from home is for me? There are holes everywhere. But I uh, I think the RP accent, it's, it's sort of soft power of the British. It's fascinating. And I think it's because we have things like Pathé News. If you don't know it, you can go and listen to lots of uh, various examples of it. And uh, I think Pathé, you know, it's... it's it's brilliant, that kind of like uh, stiff upper lip, hello, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Uh, we've got some chaps and they're just coming back from war. Many of them have PTSD, but don't worry, alcohol will deal with that, that kind of accent. Uh, it's the sort of accent that only fits certain situations. Like, for example, the footage of the Hindenburg disaster, they were very lucky that was an American who was on that rather than an Englishman. Because, you know, the, the, the classic bit of like, oh, the humanity, my God, what's going on? He, he's full of the kind of like, ah, the, the, the real drama of it. If an, an Englishman had been looking at the Hindu, he went, Edith, they seem to be having a problem with their temperature control. It's the understated nature of the English accent. I, 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 it makes you feel like they're in control. It, it, it's, it's soft power, amazing. And uh, <clears throat> my absolute favorite example of that of, of underplaying things is uh, it's one you can see on the BFI website. Um, it's from the Le Mans 24 hour. And basically the, the commentary goes something like this. <clears throat> Here we have a lovely day for racing. The German cars are going in first and second, but don't worry, there are the Jaguars of the British coming in closely behind. Everything's going wonderfully and fantastic driving from all in calls. And then amazingly, one of the Germans has spun off and he's crashed into the crowd and there's fire and blood and there is families torn apart in a moment. And the British cars came in first and second. And why are they managing the race? <laughs> Horrifying. The, the, the thing about the, 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 the British nicking things from around the world, it sort of, it, it ruins my enjoyment of, uh, or it ruins anyone's enjoyment of sort of um, historic sites. Like if you've ever gone to a, a, a beautiful stately home and walk around there on your own, you're just like, oh my God, this is a beautiful carpet. What a lovely fireplace. Uh, the decor is amazing. And a, a little velvet rope to let me know that I'm in a National Trust site. You know, comforting. But if you ever buy the uh, the audio tours of them, it's usually a quite a posh gentleman going, the carpet's made entirely from tigers. Oh, God. 
<laughs> the fireplace is actually from the bones of Indians. Oh, no, no, no I don't oh, want to know you. The entire thing was paid for by slaves. No, stop. Oh, velvet rope, don't betray me. The velvet rope was actually used to hang servants that had this. <laughs> so it's a tricky thing. Um, the moustache, just to finish off. Um, this is an accidental moustache. I didn't, I didn't mean to have it. Um, I grew this for a gig specifically, you know, I'm not a monster. And uh, I got home and uh, I went to shave it off like any sensible human being would. And, and my wife went, no. <laughs> I was like, why? She went, I don't know. But I kind of like it. And now we so you know it works <laughs> Ben I think we can dismount I believe we can ladies and gentlemen give it up for Paul Duncan McGarrity <laughs> truly um, one of the single weirdest experiences in my life <laughs> um, uh, mate I presume you've not got yeah, I, 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 I like firstly, particularly with your brand new haircut, that looked like the world's weirdest hostage video. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there is I've, very... I've done this weekend, and most of them have been kicks gigs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like honestly, after, after this, log off and have a look at the video on Facebook because there is lots of laughter and clapping coming your way. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, but, but, uh, Dan, <laughs> Dan, a big fan of the untrustworthy Scousers line. Clearly, that's McCartney's fault again. They should have heard him whistling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, and and his uh, McCartney uh, and, and uh, his uh, his his wife Celia has said the British came first and second. The title of your colonial sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, colonial sex tape. My favourite prog rock band, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you for bringing ducks on board the ship fall. <laughs> um, can I just say as well, uh, uh, Alexis, I'm really enjoying your commitment to character of staying in that really tight <laughs> and rack throughout this entire broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I want to ask one question of all of the crew before we uh, go on to our final act of the evening. Oh, and, and uh, I must say as well, um, thank you, uh, Robin Redette, for your kind donation uh, and also Hans Pate for your kind donation as well. Mm -hmm. There is still time. This is, there's still time. God, this is, this, this, this is already turning into a, uh, <laughs> into a dodgy uh, telethon. Uh, hustle, still time. Hustle. Uh, hustle, hustle. Oh, thanks, coach. Uh, still time to donate to us so uh, we can raid the Isles of uh, Lidl and Iceland tomorrow. Uh, oh, you can donate. Seals. Yeah, think of the seal. Like that seal is missing 80% of its natural blubber. That's what a seal with uh, anorexia looks like. It'll be all right. It's, the uh, people are going to give. Yeah. <laughs> And if not, it's the bag and the lead pipe for the seal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Just okay. them's the facts. Them's I'm, the I facts. mean, I'm clearly being good cop this evening, and <laughs> Becky and John Henry are being the bad cop. Um, <laughs> a question, a question to all of you uh, before we go to the, to the to, before John Henry transmogrifies into the story beast. Um, if you had one person. Uh, that you could choose to walk the plank of this ship. Currently, not the crew. Uh, who would you like to feed to the sharks right now? Let's let's try and steer away from the obvious. Oh, who, uh... <sighs> no, I'm going yeah. with the obvious. Jacob Rees, Mark, fuck him. Oh yeah. We could just do them all between us. We, if we took one each, we could do them all. Well, not all of them, but like like a, we could take a decent whack out of the country. We could show them yeah. who's boss. We could <laughs> send a message, and that's the important thing. The, the we'll thing start is, with Cameron, then move on to who's next? Gove. I don't know. You carry on, but I'm just saying we yeah. can do <laughs> make a difference if we pulled if we pulled all our answers together. But Becky, we've just done our pitch for money, and like, who are the oh, richest shit. donors? It's the Tories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we've shot ourselves in the foot with that. May I suggest one? Go on, Nathan. So, do you say Jason Statham? Yes, because Why he actually say... quite a decent uh, die uh, like highboard diver. I just reckon he still got it in him. You think he could Very fight a shark? 
Just like <laughs> jacking up sharks. I reckon he could backflip into a shark. It'd be quite exciting for the shark. It's a matter yeah. of time before that ends up as a Jaws remake, isn't it? <laughs> Send in Statham to just punch the shit out of him. He's already done a shark film, hasn't he? He did that one yeah. where he's... Oh, it's the, he did the, the, the Meg. Yes. The Meg. <laughs> I saw oh, a bit of great. Yeah, I watched a bit of that on a plane. It was uh, it's exactly what you expect it to be. Don't worry, the yeah, shots will get you up there. Yeah, it's not the uh, it wasn't the sequel to Megan Mog that I was expecting. <laughs> um oh absolutely oh, but like Becky is so on <laughs> Becky is on props vibes right now. Um who knew that you were going to get a live action reenaction of Jaws versus Seal Pup? <laughs> <laughs> It's going to take you so long to tidy your room again. Yeah. <laughs> Dan has just said that Michael Gove has retracted his PayPal donation, but I didn't see the second, the last word there. I thought he said Mike, Michael Gove has just retracted his PayPal, and I thought that was his nickname for his... Never mind. <laughs> God, that's an unpleasant image. Um, right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been, talking, we've been talking of outright murder on the high seas, and so it's time to conclude this evening's broadcast with a murder ballad. So, for the final times, raise your glasses and begin applauding for the Beast of the Seven Seas, the Story Beast. Hello there. Yes, hello. And, uh, yes, I will be presenting uh, a murder ballad for you this evening. Uh, this is... Um, it's very new. Uh, so, uh, it's... Uh, and it's called Angel with a Filthy Soul, which I thought <laughs> was pretty badass, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Kevin killed his first when he was eight. Didn't do it with spite, didn't do it with hate. Swung a paint can at a criminal's face and laid him <laughs> out stony dead. He killed his next on the very same night, in the very same house, in the very same fight. A scale's head got blowtorched up real bright. Poor bastard's now missing a head. <laughs> Instruments of torture littered the floors, a burning hot doorknob burning out the met door, an orgy of evidence that the cops just ignored. The kid was defending his home. Don't worry, Mrs. McAllister, Kate. There's a stand-your-ground law that we got in this state. Kid was just scared. Kevin's only, what, eight? And besides, he was home alone. <laughs> <laughs> They chose not to see he was killing for sport, Miss Blueprint showing the malice of forethought, which is why that Christmas Kevin didn't get caught. And that was a crying <laughs> pity. Cause Kevin killed his next when he turned 10, must have still seen the faces of the first two men, cause he slipped away from his family again to get lost in New York City. <laughs> Modus operandi, same as before. He lures in two junkies to burgle a toy store, tempting them onto the killing floor with prospect of money for meths. Inside, they fumble in abject confusion, staples and bricks to the face, leaving bruises. They try to escape, but it's worse than useless. They're stumbling towards their deaths. A steel sink is rigged. For electrocution, Guy washes his hands and then pfft, blows all the fuses. Another's consumed in a fiery ablution. Kerosene down the toilet got lots of uses. Explosion that follow leaves the whole place a ruin. So no witnesses and no evidence proving Kevin's extrajudicial executions. So NYPD cannot draw a conclusion. And even then, if they did... The same thing happens again and again. Kevin churns out the sequels of Murdered Men, Christmas 93 to 2010, till Kevin's no longer a kid. McAllister's murder machine moves on to Baton Rouge, Baltimore, Buffalo, Boston, Topeka and Tulsa, Tacoma and Tucson, to Lewiston and Newton and Rooston and Houston, till someone connected the dots. FBI got a real hot tippies in a backwater factory, Mississippi. But as they roll out, all set to let Rippy has already fired the first shot. The SWAT team breaches the wall and reaches corridors of bear traps set for besiegers to funnel them into a well full of feces. But someone's caught sight of their man. 
His big brother Buzz is the only one cop who's left with his life and his gun, shouting, bringing you in, Flemwad! Nowhere to run! But this was all part of Kev's plan. Soon as Buzz reaches that hidden room, he knows that he is as good as doomed, because that's not his brother by the bomb. Tick, tick. The rest is silence and fear. Forensics team picked with a fine tooth and shovel, the bomb site that now was an unseemly puzzle, with nothing to show for their pain and their trouble, but a margarita pizza. Only half guzzled, and Macaulay Culkin's corpse, McAllister's double, and a cryptic note that they fished from the rubble. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, <laughs> and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, delightful. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the story beast. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you tuned in for a murder ballad and instead you got a full Netflix box set, ladies and gentlemen. That's, an that's, a, that's, a, that's a completely original story. I'd just like to make that clear. <laughs> yeah. All the right belong to me. Yeah. <laughs> That um, I I didn't realise that you uh, had dressed so deliberately like Allen Ginsberg this evening as well. They deliberately just I, like him as well. And I'll be howling and uh, mourning the finest minds of my generation next. You know, it's just that's that's my next thing for this evening. To be yeah, honest. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I mean, until the end of this disease uh, happens, you'll be on your roof, naked, screaming the word <laughs> maim on over and over again. With us going, we get your point. Now get to the good bit. <laughs> Quite. Quite so. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. We've got on a real, a like, Ginsberg. We've, I mean, we've made it as a nice, accessible gig. We've had yeah. archaeology. Yeah. The whole point, the whole point of this oh, sort of broadcast is you, br you bring the content that you want, not the content that people need. Yeah, exactly. No, screw what anyone else wants. I, I'm, <laughs> exactly, I'm just, I would be sitting here declaiming loudly. In you this, don't need yeah, no, I don't need anyone. I don't need an audience. <laughs> I've got a baby now. He thinks I'm hilarious. <laughs> oh, right. Gives me so oh, much yeah. energy. Yeah. Right there. I, uh, just, just wait, because my like my son has now got to the stage where his favourite YouTube videos, they were trains and then they were buses, and now he's become obsessed with lawnmowers, and you don't know true boredom until you've watched an advert <laughs> for German lawnmowers five times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> It is horrifying. Uh, the German lawnmowers, uh, one of my favourite garage bands. Um, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, both uh, the four of you, uh, four, well, five, including Athena, who is currently being devoured by a giant Greenland shark. Um, thank you for... Don't worry, don't worry Statham's on it. I see. <laughs> he's, he's got her back. Oh, glad to hear it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we brought him on board at just the, the opposite time. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking part in our in our maiden voyage, and thank you, everyone at home who has been watching. And um, before we go, two things. First of all, if you've if you've enjoyed songs uh, from Becky Owen, if you have enjoyed uh, Tales of Ooh. Villainy from Paul Duncan McGarity, if you have enjoyed Murder Ballads from The Story Beast, and if you've enjoyed The Shipping Forecast, <laughs> oh boy, from <laughs> Alexis Dubas. Uh, then please, by all means, uh, donate us by PayPal or coffee uh, so they can buy uh, groceries or seal food or uh, moustache wax uh, or I uh, imagine uh, opium uh, for, to feed oh, their various habits. Um, two last things before we go. Um, we, uh, we are going to be back next week. As of next Monday, we are going every Monday night, every Friday night. We've got some astonishing acts ahead of us. Next Monday night, uh, we have got an ex-professional wrestler, another sea shanty singer and a juggler, and then hell of a show on May the 8th, uh, where we have got an actual opera singer to be our figurehead. We have got Andrew O'Neill singing songs about Cthulhu ruining a trip to the seaside. Yeah. We've got a woman who has swum the channel and is going to be giving us a demonstration. And we have uh, the amazing Sindhu V, who is on bloody everything at the moment, coming to tell us uh, her own salty sea stories. Later on down the line, we've got uh, beatboxers, we've got uh, chap hop performers, uh, uh, we have got card ninjas and other monsters from the deep. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this, keep tuning in, 
keep telling your friends about us. Uh, uh, spread the message on Twitter, on Facebook, on TikTok if you can, and via Semaphore. Until now, uh, this is Captain Vanderveld of the HMS Unprecedented wishing you well. Make sure you wash your hands, stay safe, and only hug those who are government mandated. Until next Monday, we will see you soon. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Bye.